There are moments in history that make you question the very fabric of human nature, not the grand speeches or the monuments of progress, but the shadowy deeds that took place behind closed doors hidden from public view. Deeds that expose just how dark the human mind can become when it's free from moral restraints. This is the story of human experiments, the kind that didn't just push boundaries, but shattered them, leaving countless lives broken in their wake. These weren't the works of nameless, faceless monsters. They were performed by men and women who wore white coats, holding positions of authority, trusted by society. Doctors, scientists, and military officials, people expected to protect human life. Yet when no one was looking, they became something much more terrifying. They became the architects of nightmares. Our journey begins with one of the most infamous figures in the world of human experimentation, Dr. Joseph Mengele. Mengele's laboratory wasn't a sterile, controlled environment, but the horrifying depths of Auschwitz, one of the most notorious Nazi concentration camps. He was obsessed with twins, seeing them as a way to unlock the mysteries of heredity. He would separate them from their families, make them subjects in his perverse experiments, and observe them like a child pulling the wings off a fly. To Mengele, twins represented a unique opportunity to compare the effects of torture, disease, and mutilation. One twin might be injected with a mysterious chemical, while the other would be forced to endure an entirely different form of suffering. Once one twin died, he would often kill the other to perform post-mortem autopsies, comparing the damage inflicted. The agony endured by these children was unspeakable, and for many, there was no escape. Mengele's fascination with deformities, physical anomalies, and genetics turned innocent people into grotesque playthings for his sick fascination. But Mengele was far from alone. His cold and calculated cruelty mirrored the mindset of countless others who used war and political chaos as a cover for their own dark experiments. Around the same time, across the Atlantic, the United States government was embarking on its own questionable scientific endeavors. The Tuskegee syphilis study is one of the darkest stains on American medical history. In 1932, hundreds of African-American men were misled into participating in a study that promised treatment for syphilis. These men, many of whom were poor and had little access to medical care, were told they would be treated for their illness. What they didn't know was that the treatment was a lie. The real goal of the study was to observe what would happen to these men if their syphilis was left untreated. Over the course of 40 years, as the disease ravaged their bodies, the men were denied treatment even when penicillin, a known cure, became widely available. They suffered, their families suffered, and entire generations were lost to the ravages of this preventable disease, all while doctors took notes and watched. This was not science in the name of progress. This was exploitation, and it was carried out by individuals who hid behind the veil of authority. And then, there was Unit 731. Japan's World War II atrocities are well known, but the horrors of Unit 731 remain one of the most chilling examples of human experimentation. Tucked away in the occupied region of Manchuria, Unit 731 operated under complete secrecy. Officially, it was a research unit of the Imperial Japanese Army, but in reality it was a house of horrors where prisoners were treated worse than animals. The experiments conducted by Unit 731 were nothing short of torture. Prisoners, most of them civilians from China and Russia, were subjected to biological and chemical warfare tests. They were intentionally infected with the plague, cholera, and anthrax just to see how quickly they would die. Vivisection, the act of dissecting a living person, was performed without anesthesia. They cut into these men, women, and even children, ripping out organs, testing the limits of human endurance, and documenting every agonizing moment. Their only goal? to gather information on how to create more effective weapons of war. Perhaps most horrifying of all, after the war, many of those involved in Unit 731 were granted immunity by the United States in exchange for the data they had collected. The atrocities were swept under the rug, and the perpetrators went unpunished. Their victims left to rot in unmarked graves, their stories nearly erased from history. But the madness of human experimentation wasn't confined to war-torn regions. Even after the world had witnessed the devastation of World War II, governments continued to push ethical boundaries under the guise of national security. One of the most chilling examples of this was the CIA's MKULTRA project. 
a program designed to study mind control through various forms of psychological manipulation. What began as an investigation into brainwashing techniques morphed into something much darker. The CIA recruited scientists to perform experiments on unknowing citizens, dosing them with LSD and other drugs to see how their minds would react. These experiments weren't just conducted on hardened criminals or prisoners of war, they were done on ordinary Americans. College students, hospital patients, and unsuspecting individuals were pulled into this web of psychological manipulation, often without their consent or knowledge. The goal of MKUltra was simple, to break people's minds, erase their memories, and reprogram them. But the results were catastrophic. The drugs often induced severe hallucinations, paranoia, and permanent psychological damage. Some subjects were locked in sensory deprivation tanks for days, while others were subjected to brutal sleep deprivation techniques. The human mind, stripped of its defenses, became a battlefield for control. And control was exactly what these scientists wanted. For them, the ends justified the means. But for the victims, MKUltra was a living nightmare. Some never fully recovered from the experiments, while others were driven to the brink of insanity. The project was so secretive that even today, much of its scope remains hidden from public view. But the horrors don't stop there. Psychological manipulation, exploitation, and experimentation have roots that stretch far deeper than most would care to admit. One of the most insidious examples took place in the realm of speech therapy. In 1939 at the University of Iowa, an experiment known as the Monster Study was conducted. Its victims were vulnerable orphans, children with no voice or family to protect them. The researchers aimed to discover whether stuttering was a learned behavior by giving one group of orphans positive reinforcement for their speech, while the other group was shamed and belittled, regardless of whether they actually had speech issues. The results were predictable. Many of the children who were ridiculed and criticized developed lifelong speech problems, while those who received praise thrived. These children, already traumatized by the loss of their families, were subjected to psychological torture by those they trusted. And so, the question remains, what drives human beings to commit such acts? What pushes a doctor, a scientist, a government official to turn human life into a disposable commodity in the name of knowledge? Is it power? Is it ambition? Or is it something darker, something lurking deep within the human psyche that, given the right circumstances, can turn even the most well-meaning individual into a monster? The answer is complex, and perhaps we'll never fully understand it. But what is clear is that the victims of these experiments were not just names on a list. They were real people, with families, with futures. Futures that were stolen from them by those who saw them as little more than tools. As we look back on these stories, it's important to realize that human experimentation is not a relic of the past. Even today, questions around medical ethics, consent, and the treatment of vulnerable populations are still being debated. We must remain vigilant to ensure that the dark history of human experiments is never repeated. While these experiments often sought to push the boundaries of science, they remind us of the fine line between discovery and destruction, between advancement and atrocity. For every breakthrough that benefits humanity, there are those who use knowledge for darker purposes, to control, to manipulate, to harm. The human mind is capable of remarkable things, both good and evil. And while we can celebrate the achievements of science, we must never forget the cost at which some of that knowledge was obtained. The victims of human experiments may never get justice, but we owe it to them to remember their stories and ensure that their suffering was not in vain. In the end, the dark psychology of human experiments doesn't just reveal the horrors that people can inflict on others. It reveals something much more unsettling. It shows us the fragility of morality, how easily it can be stripped away in the pursuit of power, and how quickly the line between scientist and monster can blur. It is a reminder, perhaps the most important one of all, that true progress can only be achieved when it is grounded in compassion, ethics, and respect for the dignity of every human life. This is the dark and haunting world of human experiments, a world where people became objects, where suffering was turned into data, and where ethics were sacrificed on the altar of scientific progress. It's a part of history we cannot forget, and one we must ensure never happens again.